charging your phones. We've all done that a million times, right? But are you actually doing it the right way? Surely you've heard stuff like don't charge to 100% or don't fast charge, no overnight charging and so on. But is it actually true and what is the best way to preserve your phone battery without too much effort? The thing is, batteries wear over time and the amount of charge they hold goes down from day one essentially. Extremely simplified, you can imagine a battery being two car parks connected with a road. When the battery is at 50% charge, half the cars are parked on each side. Everything is nicely balanced, nothing is too cramped and every car has enough space to maneuver in and out. This balanced state is what the battery likes most. Now, when you're charging the phone, the cars, which are actually tiny charged particles called lithium ions, travel from one side, the cathode, to the other side, the anode. And when your phone is running on battery, they travel in the opposite direction. I'm sure you can already imagine that being at 100% charge where all the cars are tightly packed into one place or nearly 0% where they are all cramped on the other side, well, it gets a bit stressful. Cars are bumping into each other and, you know, causing scrapes and dents. And it really is the same for your battery. It suffers when being at these extremes close to either 100% or 0%. So it is absolutely true that a battery lasts longest when staying close to 50% most of the time. In an ideal world, you'd keep it between 40 and 60%. But since this isn't practical for most people, keeping it between 20 and 80% is a great compromise. Now back to our two car parks and let's look at the road connecting them. When do you think more accidents would happen? when cars are going really slow or when they're speeding like crazy. The speedy, right? And that is fast charging in a nutshell. You are forcing the ions to race through the electrolyte our road, causing more wear and tear. And when you add heat from fast charging, a hot environment or playing demanding games while plugged in, and it's like adding potholes to that road, making even more damage likely. So what can we learn from that? First, if you want to treat your phone battery well, steer clear of fast charging whenever possible and also try to avoid excessive heat whenever possible. That means don't put your phone into the blazing sun and more importantly don't do crazy demanding stuff like playing games while charging. And second, do keep an eye on those battery percentages. Try to develop a habit of keeping your charge between 20 and 80 percent. Now I know what you're thinking, what about overnight charging, right? Well, good news, modern phones are getting smarter about this. The current iPhone models, for example, give you the option to only ever charge up to 80%. And I know that recent Pixel devices get the same feature with Android 15, as well as recent Samsungs um, that offer something called uh, battery protection that can limit charging to 85% if I'm not wrong here. And if your phone doesn't have these built-in features, there are solutions like Chargy, for example, that does the same thing essentially with a hardware dongle for your uh, charging cable. And I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, by the way. Okay, now we know how we should treat our batteries, but many people say, well, if I'm only allowed to be between 20 and 80% all the time, I'm essentially giving up nearly half of the capacity I'm paying for, right? And same for fast charging capabilities, like I paid for this feature, I also want to use it, right? And that's totally understandable, but in order to evaluate that, we need to figure out how much more life you can actually squeeze out of your battery when doing everything the right way. Um, but let's start with this. First, when is a battery actually considered too worn out? Most experts and manufacturers point to this magic number of 80% of original capacity. Apple even starts throttling the iPhones below this mark. But why 80%? Two main reasons. First, lithium batteries tend to degrade faster below 80%. It's like hitting a tipping point where wear accelerates. It starts more linear and after 80, 75%, whatever, it you know, starts to, to increase. And the second reason is most people start to actually feel the, the impact of the weaker battery at this point. Imagine usually coming home from a workday with 20% of charge left, but now your phone dies during your commute, which is a bummer, right? But how many more charging cycles does a phone actually endure until the max capacity does drop below the 80% when you're doing everything the proper way in terms of charging versus you don't care at all? 
in theory and I linked a lot of theory from Battery University down in the description below in case you want to do a deep dive. But in theory you can expect nearly double the usable lifespan when you never fast charge and always keep your battery between 20 and 80. And that might be the difference between two or four years of usable battery for example. And given the fact that depending on your phone a battery replacement will cost you anywhere from 50 to upwards of 200 dollars in some cases, that is some significant savings in my opinion. And also if you intend to sell your phone at least when doing so privately, the max battery capacity seems to be the most important metric after price and general condition. And here in Austria at least, iPhones with over 90% left compared to those closer to the 80% sell for around 20% more. So if I had to name a number, I'd say that again depending on your specific phone, the financial savings when charging the right way would be around 20 to maybe 60, even 70 or 80 dollars per year. Now it is of course totally up to you to decide whether that is enough to sacrifice a bit of convenience in terms of you know, fast charging and not going outside this 20 to 80 percent restraints. And of course next to the economical viewpoint there's also an environmental point to be made in favor of trying to use a battery as long as possible and looking after it, right? Now in conclusion here's a practical approach. First get a phone with more battery capacity than you think you need. A bigger battery makes that 20 to 80 percent range more livable because you've got more capacity to begin with. Then if your phone supports it set that 80 percent charging limit. It's automatic so you don't have to think about well stopping charge manually. And as for fast charging, if you've got a phone with good battery capacity you probably don't need it for daily use. Your phone should last all day regardless and you can charge it overnight at normal speeds. This way you're preserving your battery without much effort and it's mostly set and forget. Now if you want to learn more about smartphone economics I guess and how much you can save during purchase or uh, over the course of your ownership, these videos here and there might be interesting for you. Alright, I hope you liked this one. If so, please give it a like and consider subscribing and yeah, cheers!